So this week we're going to be thinking about Putnam's paper meaning and reference. So up until now we've been mostly focusing on names. That is, expressions like David Boylan, Superman, Clark Kent, and search your favourite name. We're going to be shifting gears a little bit this week and we're going to be thinking about what are called natural kind terms. So I actually encountered these before when we talked about Mill's view. Remember, Mill said that maybe names have denotation without connotation, but there were lots of other expressions he, that he thought had both. One particular category he thought had both was these things called natural kind terms. So we're going to call, use natural kind terms to refer to things like the word water, the word gold, the word chair, and so on. These are going to be natural kind terms. And you can sort of think of what Putnam is doing this week, is that Putnam is kind of just as Kripke was trying to rebut a particular version of the description theory for names, Putnam is trying to rebut something very like the description theory for, for natural kinds. In fact, it's something very like the theory that Mill gave of natural kinds. That's what Putnam is attacking in this paper here today. And just like Kripke gave us an externalist picture of meaning, where what our words mean is, is not to, totally dependent on the individual language users. It can be, it's determined by facts outside them. Putnam is going to present a similar conclusion for natural kind terms. He's going to say that unlike what the picture you get from the connotation and denotation picture from Mill and maybe from Frege, what your words mean is not totally dependent on just the, the sort of the, the ideas or the sense that you associate with them. Like with Kripke, the world itself plays a large role in determining that your natural kind terms pick out the things that they do. And the way he's going to argue this is by thinking about a series of thought experiments that have become extremely famous in philosophy, and pretty much as famous as the kind of examples from Kripke that we saw last week. And this sort of tag team of Kripke on names and Putnam on natural kind terms was the start of this like really new idea in philosophy of language, this externalist approach to meaning which is still one of like the leading metasemantic views of language today. So the first thing we're going to do in today's video is we're going to talk about the target view a little bit more carefully. We're going to introduce this claim that Putnam sets up that he's going to be attacking in the very first section of the paper. Then we're going to look at the twin earth examples. There are basically three kinds of cases we're going to be thinking about. After that, we're going to think about some objections. These are not necessarily objections that are in the paper, but they are objections that are very intuitive and natural when you start thinking about the paper, but there are also ones that I think that Putnam has pretty good responses to. So after thinking about the thought example, so after thinking about the thought experiments, we're going to think about some objections to the thought experiments. After that, we're going to think about the positive picture of meaning that Putnam himself gives, this what we might call indexical view of reference fixing, which gives rise to the externalist picture of meaning. And the very last thing we're going to do after that is we're, we're going to quickly talk about this idea Putnam introduces of the, of the division of linguistic labor. So that's going to be the plan for the lecture today.